everyone. I'm Haley Grace, a broker with Emerald Real Estate. We're here today with Todd Devin and Sergio Corrales. We'll be introducing our guide to selling your house in Nicaragua, where we cover the whole process of selling your home. And I'm Todd Devin, associate broker and realtor that covers the Granada, Messiah, and Carrasco Beach areas. And I am Sergio Corrales. I am an attorney and managing partner of the Corrales y Asociados firm. Sergio, thank you so much for making time to be with us here today. So can you elaborate more on the importance of having your documents organized and ready to go as a seller? It is very important to have all your ducks in a row when you're selling. That could be the difference between closing your deal or having your deal fall through. And Sergio, can you tell us what documents should a seller be prepared to provide before he lists the property? So everything depends on what type of property you're selling. Every single deal includes that you have to provide your title, you have to provide an approved survey, a tax solvency, meaning that, uh, showing that the property owes no taxes, a fee of lien certificate. So that goes in every single deal. Now, depending on what you're selling, there could be some additional documents. For example, if you're selling a property that's uh, close to the beach, like a beachfront property, there could be the need for a no objection certificate. And if you're selling a property with a house, you would probably have to provide the utilities up to date and, and some other documents. Depending, it's, it, it all depends on what property you're selling. The first items that I listed always go with every single uh, deal. So that's a lot of documents, and maybe we should go in depth on a couple more of the items, like the Certificate of Non-Objection Letter. Can you explain to us what that is? Sure. So that's a document that's issued by the Attorney General's Office. Uh, basically, it's a review that the authorities do on the title of the property to make sure that, that the government has no objection to the sale. It is, it is applied for beachfront property, for property that comes from agrarian titles, from uh, properties that were once belonged to the government, and properties that belong to banks that went bankrupt in the 90s. And how long does that process take generally? Well, it depends uh, on a lot of factors. Uh, once you file the application, which basically you should know that um, the government now has changed the process. It used to be that you went directly, if you had one of these properties, you went directly to the Attorney General's office to request the no objection certificate. But now you have to request the approval of the survey. They will reject the approval and with that letter is um, you open door to go to the Attorney General's office. So once you file, uh, it depends on, on the workload that the government has, but we're talking about probably um, around eight months. Okay, so that could definitely cause a delay in closing. Definitely. If you hire a competent attorney, an experienced attorney in real estate, um, they will know beforehand if you need to get one, and if you do need to get one, then he'll tell you um, to you know, what the process of the deal uh, will be so you can so you can get that document because you need it for closing. So it's definitely a good point then to get all of these documents ahead of time or to start the process ahead of time so you know what you might be dealing with in terms of delays. Yes. So for me, step one is, is hiring a competent, experienced real estate agent and a competent and experienced lawyer. Absolutely. And then everything will flow smoothly. Sergio, could you explain the importance of purchase deed in a real estate transaction? So the purchase, your, the purchase deed is your title, right? And one thing that you have to make sure is that it's registered. Because we, we have had clients who come to us that they're gonna sell their property and we find out that they're, they haven't recorded their title. So, you know, that's gonna cause a huge delay in the, in the process of selling your property. But basically, um, you should have, at closing, when you purchase the property, you should have gotten your title and a copy of your title because the, your attorney should have started the process of recording it. You know that, you ha that your title is recorded because at the very end, there's a paragraph that has the signature of the registrar and the seal of the registry. So that's how you know that your title is registered. Can we discuss the role of an updated approved survey in the buyer's name in the real estate transaction? Yes. So now for every transaction, regardless um, if it's a subdivision or if you're buying the entire property of the seller, you have to provide 
a new survey, which has to be approved by the cadastral office. That's where all the surveys are recorded. And it has to have your name as the seller and your buyer's name as the buyer. So you have to start that process until after you have a signed deal. Actually, what we recommend is you start that process immediately after you have a signed deal, you have a deposit, and the attorney has has given the okay. But it's important to know that it this is a process that takes a couple of weeks. So you need to, to be ready to start that process immediately. Now, Sergio, I've had sellers who've been hesitant about getting a new survey in the buyer's name because they feel like that's going to transfer ownership and they haven't received any money. The deal hasn't closed yet. So it's safe for the seller to get a new survey and submit that to the catastro? Absolutely. If for any reason the deal falls through, you as the owner, you can go to the uh, cadastro office and you can notify them that the deal fell through. Uh, and they will cancel the approval uh, of the survey. So that survey does not transfer ownership at that point? Not at all. Great. So two of the items that you mentioned were the Solvencia Municipal and then the Certificate of No Liens. What's the process in getting those two items? Okay, so <clears throat> once again, I, I should recommend any seller to get a competent real estate agent and a competent attorney because then they don't have to deal with this and this can be done by them. For the free of lien certificate, the owner has to do is get an official paper, you know, one of those long papers with the, with the seal of the country and make a request to the registrar and they have to include the information, uh, the registry information of the property. That's the property number, the volume, the uh, pages and the asiento and, and request a free of lien certificate. Then they have to go to the bank and they to pay 150 Cordobas. Uh, and after that, uh, they go to the registry with the receipt of the 150 Cordobas and the document of request. They file that and depending on which registry you go, there are 16 different registries in Nicaragua, depending on what province you, you're in. It could last between three, uh, three days to a couple of weeks. Okay. And you say the seller needs to do that, but I assume an attorney can do that as well for them? Yes. So if you hire an attorney, your attorney will, should do that for you. And does the attorney need a special power of attorney if there's a seller who's out of the country? It, it, de it depends on the registry. And, and we should talk about power of attorney because that's a, that's a big issue, uh, which can really uh, delay a closing. In some registries, uh, the registrars are requesting that uh, the person making the request, if it's not the owner, uh, they present a power of attorney. It's a limited power of attorney, allowing that person only to make that request at the public registry. Okay. And then the Solvencia Municipal, which shows that the taxes are current, that's obtained how? Yes, so you go to the municipality, and if you're up to date with the taxes, you go directly to uh, the cashier, and you request a uh, Solvencia. They will make you fill out a form, uh, in which you have to include the information of the property and pay 100 Cordobas. Sometimes you get it the same day, sometimes you get it the next day. So it's quick. It, yes. If you're not current with the taxes, then you have to go first um, to the municipality to get your bill. You have to uh, pay the taxes and then make the request. So for sellers with the Alcadia lease, what are the essential documents that they should be providing to buyers? Well, that's, that's an easy one. They have to provide the actual lease document, the contract. Uh, they have to provide proof that they've paid their uh, lease fee for the year. They have to provide the um, proof of the property taxes. And if they bought, um, if, they get, if they got the lease um, with uh, already a building on it, then they have to show the uh, document that proves that, they, that they're the owners of the improvements. So, Sergio, some people own property in their own names, and then others own in an SAA or a corporation. And so, how is the transfer different if it's a corporation that owns the property? So, let's talk about the easiest first, which is a trust. 
Um, so all you have to do, all the seller has to do is once the deal closes, is change the name of benefic the beneficiary. That's how title is transferred. Uh, once that is completed, your attorney should register that change of beneficiary at the public registry. And that's all that needs to be done. Obviously there is there is a tax to be paid, but it, to change ownership, that's, that's what needs to be done. If it's a Sociedad Anonima or any type of uh, company corporation, then there, there has to be a, uh, what I call the stock purchase agreement, uh, which details the deal. You as a seller have to uh, sign over the shares. You have to endorse the shares in the name of the buyer. Your attorney should do that for you, but, you, but you're saying that you are transferring the, the certificate that, that uh, contains this many shares in the name of the buyer. You have to date it and sign it. Um, you, you have to make sure as a seller, you have to make sure that um, that gets registered in the share logbook because that's how legally you stop being a shareholder of the company uh, and therefore you don't have any liabilities in the future. And um, you need to make sure that they register that change of ownership of the shares in the public registry. So is that a, a lengthy process to do all of that? No, it, it's actually faster than a normal closing of a property. It should take no more than a month or two months. Okay, does sound a little bit involved though, so you definitely need an attorney to be reviewing all of those documents. Yes. Sergio, so what are the common costs for sellers to prepare for closing and how can they estimate those costs? Costs for the sellers in a closing are substantially lower than the buyer's costs. Basically, you're responsible for your attorney fees. You're paying for the survey that needs to be done by a topographer. You're paying for, and, the, and then all the documents that you need to provide, we're talking about the fee of lien certificate, which we already covered, uh, the solvencia, and depending on of the specific deal, there, there might be other documents that you need to pay. Uh, but basically, that's it. In order to calculate how much money you think you're, you're going to spend, if you have an attorney, the attorney will, will estimate that for you. If not, it depends specifically on the deal, so it's hard to tell you an amount. But usually surveys go between $200 and $1,000, depending on the size of your property, the location. Well, you have your attorney uh, fees. And then all other expenses are significantly low. So solvencias are 100 cords. The free of lien certificate is 150 quarts, so it's not nothing significant. Thank you. So you've obviously been an experienced attorney practicing for some time. What pitfalls do you find that sellers encounter most often when they're not prepared with their paperwork? Well, if they're not prepared with their paperwork, usually what happens is that the, uh, the closing is delayed. Sometimes you do your homework, you hire a real estate um, agent, you hire an attorney, but then there could be things like, for example, delays with the government in issuing the documents that you need. You might find out that specific issues that have nothing to do with the law, government may request an objection certificate. And a couple of times, in my experience, we have had clients who come to us that they want to sell their property, and we find out that it's not registered yet. Well, that's going to delay four months, the, the closing. So reviewing those documents to make sure that everything's in order first is obviously a priority to make sure Absolutely. that there will be no delays in closing the transaction. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you think it's important for sellers to have a power of attorney in place when they're considering selling or getting prepared to list their, their property? Well, you know, we recommend our clients who are sellers that if they think that for any reason they might not be here at closing, to issue a power of attorney. Uh, like we said, the power of attorney, it's limited. In this case, it would only allow the person appointed to sign transferring title if, you, if it's a person uh, of confidence, then to get the funds of, of the sale. Usually the funds are wired directly to the seller's account. Uh, but yes, definitely. If they believe that there might be an, a reason that they might not be here at closing, definitely a power of attorney is cheap, is quick, uh, and it secures that um, sure. the closing will not be delayed. Sure. So if the seller is not in country, then the process of uh, issuing the power of attorney takes some time. So it is important that you tell your agent and you tell your attorney that you are not in country or that you will not be in country because then the process of the power of attorney needs to start immediately. 
Are there any changes recently in real estate law that sellers and buyers should be aware of? The law doesn't really change that much, but the processes do change a lot, and they're not published. Having an experienced attorney working for you is key, and I'll give you an example. When you, when you needed an objection certificate, it used to be that you went directly to the attorney general's office and filed your request for it. So a uh, few weeks back, I'm gonna say three, four weeks back, uh, the government changed the process. They didn't publish it, they didn't, didn't do anything. And um, now you have to submit your request of approval for a survey, and then you will be rejected and a letter will be issued saying that you need an objection certificate. So if you don't have an, a, a, an experienced attorney they will go directly to the attorney general's office to file the request. And you're gonna, you're gonna uh, waste at least a month of getting that no objection certificate, which already uh, takes time to obtain. So it is, it is very important that, um, that you talk to an experienced lawyer because changes in the processes happen all the time and they're not published. I have had the experience where one attorney is still under the impression of a, of a past regulation or a past way things worked and it contradicted another attorney's opinion of how things work and it just causes a big delay. So you really do need to deal with someone who is up to date on all of the latest regulations. That's exactly my point. And another thing that's important to say is that processes are different from province to province. Like um, the process of Obtaining a, a fee of lien certificate in Managua may be different from the process in Rivas. So also, that's another reason why you need an experienced attorney. Now, would you recommend that you get, uh, that you consult an attorney who works just in that province, like a Managua attorney for Managua property, or do you think that, there are, that attorneys can work across, uh, across the different I would rather go with the attorney that deals real estate day to day because they usually work all around the country and they have all the processes, uh, you know, they, they know them all. Okay. Sergio, thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with us today. We really appreciate it. Do you have any last tips or any advice for, for people, for sellers who are thinking of selling their property here in Nicaragua? Sure. Um, I have a few tips. Um, for example, one thing that's very important is you have to estimate what your costs are as a seller and you have to add up to your, to your, to your selling price. Sure. Why? Because if you don't do that, then you, in the process of the closing, you'll feel that you're losing money. Mm -hmm. So that's one important tip. Another thing, and, I, and we've said it a few times, is choosing a competent real estate agent and a competent attorney. An attorney will not only help you with the processes, it would not only help you with dealing with the government offices and making sure that all your documents are correct and ready. He will also help you with uh, the negotiating process, can make sure that uh, the correct perspective is given to the issue and uh, find a solution so that the closing can happen, which is what you want. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Yeah, thank You're you welcome. for your time. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to answer them for you. And for full access to our seller's guide, simply leave a comment below or reach out to us through email or any social media platform.